Good evening ladies and gentlemen. We're back with another tutorial video and in this video we're going to be going over solving heat capacity and specific heat problems. So let's begin. So what is heat capacity and specific heat? And their meanings are actually similar but I give you a difference, a breakdown difference between the two. So for heat capacity is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of an object by one degree Celsius. And in specific heat is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of a material by one degree Celsius. So now what's the difference? If you notice, heat capacity talks about raising the temperature of an object by one degree Celsius. And specific heat talks about raising the temperature of one gram of a material by one degree Celsius. So let's look at this one gram of a material versus an object. So those are your major differences. So heat capacity looks at raising that temperature of the object by one degree Celsius, while specific heat, specific heat focuses on raising one gram of that material by one degree Celsius. So here's a formula for heat capacity and specific heat. If you notice, it has Q equals M times change in temperature times specific heat. So the Q represents a change in thermal energy and, un and your unit for it is joules. And your M stands for your mass of that substance, and your unit for it is going to be in G, which is going to be grams. And then change in temperature, you're going to see that triangle T, which stands for change, and the T is in temperature. And you, you're going to, in order to calculate that, you take your final temperature minus your initial temperature. And that's going to be, your unit is going to be degrees Celsius. And then for your specific heat of that substance, it's going to be joules per grams degrees Celsius. So another way you can do this formula, complete this formula, is by using this following triangle where I will put our change of thermal energy at the top over our mass times our change in temperature times our specific heat. So in order to use this, say we were solving for our change in thermal energy we would put our finger over the Q and that would leave us with mass times change in temperature times specific heat. Say if we were solving for specific heat, we would put our finger or our hand over specific heat and that would show us our formula for specific heat is Q divided by mass times change in temperature. And if we were solving for mass, we would put our finger or our hand over the M and that would show Q divided by change in temperature times specific heat. So let's look at a couple of examples of these problems. So now, before we look at our examples, let's go over the steps for solving the specific heat problems. So number one, identify the components you need to solve the problem. Number two, put a question mark by what you're solving for. Three, input your components into the specific heat formula, or you can use your specific heat triangle as a guide. Step four, solve for the component you don't have. And then step five, cross out like units and put the correct unit for your answer. So let's look at practice problem one. The specific heat of ethanol is 2.46 joules per gram degree Celsius. Find the heat required to raise the temperature of 193 grams of ethanol from 19 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius. So the first thing we did was identify the components that they gave us. And I, what we're solving for, it we're for, solving for heat energy because it says find the heat required to raise the temperature. So we're solving for Q. So I go ahead and put my question mark up here for Q. Our mass is 193 grams times our change in temperature. And the way you calculate change in temperature, remember you take your final temperature minus your initial temperature. So our final temperature is 35 degrees Celsius minus our initial temperature, which is 19 degrees Celsius. And that should give us a change in temperature of 16 degrees Celsius. Celsius. And then it says our specific heat is 2.46 joules per grams degree Celsius. So now at this time, before I go ahead and multiply my units or multiply my numbers, I'm going to go ahead and cross out the like units. So we have grams here, we have grams here, we have degrees Celsius here, and we have degrees Celsius here. So we're left with J or joules, which makes sense because heat energy is measured in joules. 
So now we'll go ahead and pull up our calculator. And let's move our calculator up. And then we'll input our numbers. 193 times 16 times 2.46. And that's going to give us 7,596.48 joules. So I put our answer here. 7,596.48 joules. And so that's what our heat energy ends up being for this problem. Let's look at practice problem number two. When a 120 gram sample of aluminum absorbs 9,612 joules of energy, its temperature increases from 25 degrees Celsius to 115 degrees Celsius. Find the specific heat of aluminum. So if we look at this, 120 grams is going to be our mass. So we input that for our mass. Absorbs 9,612 joules of energy. That's talking about our heat energy. So we'll put that at the top. Its temperature increases from 25 degrees Celsius to 115 degrees Celsius. So that's talking about our change in temperature. So let's go ahead and calculate that. We'll put our final temperature minus our initial temperature. Which should, which should give us 90 degrees Celsius. So our change in temperature is 90 degrees Celsius. And then it says find the specific heat of aluminum. So we're solving for specific heat. So I put a question mark here. So now our formula, and if you look at it, we have 9,612 joules over 120 times 90. So let's use our calculator. 120 times 90 and that will give us 10,800 so let's go ahead and put our 10,800 in and it'll be 10,800 grams degrees Celsius so now we use our calculator one more time and divide which we're going to divide 9,612 divided by 10,800 and that's going to give us a specific heat of 0 0.89 joules per grams degrees Celsius. Ladies and gentlemen, now you're going to do some independent practice on your own. You have one minute to set up and solve practice problem number three beginning now. So ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take a look at how you did on practice problem number three. It says how many joules of heat are needed to change 50 grams? So how many joules of heat? So we're solving for Q because we don't know what Q is. We don't know how many joules of heat we have. Are needed to change 50 grams. 50 grams is going to be our mass of ice at 15 degrees Celsius to steam at 120 degrees Celsius. So this is talking about a change in temperature. So in order to calculate this, we take our final temperature, 120 degrees Celsius, minus our initial temperature, 15 degrees Celsius, which gives us 105 degrees Celsius. And then it specifically says our specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. So now before we put our numbers in our calculator, let's go ahead and cross out the units that are alike. So we have a G here, G here for grams, and then we have degrees Celsius here, and we have degrees Celsius here. So that leaves our joules for our heat energy as our unit. So now let's go ahead and put our numbers in our calculators and let's find out what Q is. So 50 times 105 times 4.184 and that's going to give us 21,966 joules. So if you got this answer ladies and gentlemen, great job. Let's move on to the next one. 
You have one minute to solve the following problem starting now. Now let's check out practice problem number four, ladies and gentlemen, and see how you did. So it says, what mass of water? So it says, what mass? So we don't know what our mass is. So that's what we're solving for. And then it says, we'll change its temperature by 22 degrees Celsius. So it gives us the change of temperature. We don't even have to subtract. So by 22 degrees Celsius is a change of temperature when 425 joules of heat is added to it. So Q, which is our joules of heat, is going to be 425 joules. The specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius. So they give us a specific heat of water. So in order to solve for mass, we put our finger over the M or our hand over the M, and then it lets us know our formula is going to be Q, our heat energy, divided by our change in temperature times specific heat. So if we go ahead and put our numbers in for our letters, Q is going to equal 425 joules divided by 22 degrees Celsius, which is our change of temperature, times our specific heat, which is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. So now we'll go ahead and cross out our light units. We have joules here and joules here. Then we have degrees Celsius here and degrees Celsius here. And so now we're left with grams. And so our mass is going to equal, and let's use our calculator. First, we'll go ahead and take 22 times 4.18. And that's going to give us 91.96. So we'll do 425 divided by 91.96. And left with our grams unit. So now, let's use our calculator once again. We'll take 425 and divide it by 91.96. And that gives us 4.62. So our mass ends up being 4.62 grams. And last but not least, we have practice problem number five. You have one minute to set up and solve practice problem number five starting now. So let's look at our results for practice problem number five. It says if it takes 41.72 joules, which we have in for our Q, to heat a piece of gold weighing 18.69 grams, which is going to be our mass, from 10 degrees Celsius to 27 degrees Celsius, and when we subtract these two, it'll be 17 degrees Celsius for our change in temperature, what is the specific heat of the goal? So specific heat is what we don't know. So that's what we're solving for. So our formula for that is going to be our heat energy divided by our, ch our mass times our change in temperature. And if you notice, we have it set up right here. So 41.72 joules divided by 18.69 grams times 17 degrees Celsius. Notice we have no units to cancel out because all of these units are different. So the first thing we do is multiply 18.69 times 17, and that's how we got 317.73 at the bottom. And then next, we take 41.72 joules and divide it by 317.73 grams degrees Celsius, and that gives us, gives us a specific heat of 0 0.13 joules per gram degree Celsius. So as a review, ladies and gentlemen, you're reading, going through the problems, identifying the components that they give you, plugging them in into the formula, and then solving for what you don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this tutorial was helpful. I hope you learned a lot and gained a lot from it. I'm Travis Spivey signing off with my son, Jordan Spivey. Peace and have a great day.